It's a beautiful fall afternoon here in South Texas. It's about 16 degrees, somewhere around 65 Fahrenheit. Absolutely beautiful. I was expecting it to be a little bit cooler when I rolled out, so I might be overdressed, but that's the beauty of layering up. You can just unzip something and feel pretty good. Got about an hour workout planned. Nothing too crazy. I've got breath in my lungs and I'm out on the bike. Let's get it. You know, I love this time of the year, but one thing I do miss is the leaves. Here in Texas, at least this part of Texas, the leaves don't really change color. They turn a little bit brown. There might be a few trees that turn some reds, but that's it. Just the kind of variety of trees that they have here in this part of the world. Ah, it's not quite as awesome as the scenes I'm used to from New England. But hey, it's still beautiful in terms of temperature. Great day to be out on the bike. So lately I've been thinking about Jesus' words in Matthew 19, also in Mark 10. And it's the story of the rich young ruler. And the words of Jesus there just continually come back to plague my weak little Western heart. <laughs> Jesus says that it's very hard, very difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom. Of course, for a first century Jew, the kingdom of God was the restored kingdom of David. A son of David would come and sit on a throne in Jerusalem, restore the 12 tribes of Israel, rule over the nations, and then all the nations would flow up to Jerusalem to hear God's instruction, and it would result in global peace. And that's still yet future. And because of that, Jesus' words still have meaning and impact for us today. It's really hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom. I think one of the reasons why Jesus says that is because he knows that money and wealth and riches attaches your heart like a tether to the things of this age. the other passage that I think of that's related to all this is Jesus's words in the Sermon on the Mount where he says don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth or treasures in this age where moth and rust destroy but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust don't destroy where thieves don't break in and steal and Jesus says where your treasure is there your heart will be also So I just think about how much wealth and riches and money just pull on my heartstrings to attach my life to this age and the fleeting pleasures of life today before the resurrection, before the return of Jesus. And that's not a good place to be. Do I really want to forfeit life in a resurrected body on a restored earth with no sin and no death for momentary pleasures in this age, things that will get destroyed, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal? Do I really want to forfeit everything that God's promised? And the other little voice inside of me says, Josh, oh, it's okay. He's provided you all things to richly enjoy. You live in America, it's good. But then I remember the story from the documentary called Sheep Among Wolves, which you haven't seen, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. It's from Frontier Alliance International, Sheep Among Wolves. It's about the underground church in Iran. And there was a couple who, many of you probably know this story, 
was being persecuted. They were able to escape Iran and come to America. And when they came to America, they had lived here just a few short months. And after living here for a while, the wife said to her husband, man, honey, life is getting crazy here. There's like a demonic lullaby that everyone is listening to and everyone is sleepy. And she said, I'm starting to feel sleepy. So what did they do? They went back to Iran. My goodness. Now that is a sobering story. I don't want to just presume that because I love Jesus and I go to church and I understand the Bible that somehow I'm immune from the effects of this demonic lullaby. I want to hear the words of Jesus and take them to heart. Friends, I want to bring you into this with me because if we were to look at all of human history and look at the amount of wealth that we have, I mean, most of you are probably watching this on a pretty expensive device, whether it's a laptop or phone or something. And realistically speaking, we are in that top 1% of the wealthiest people in human history. So does Jesus's words apply to me and you? Absolutely. We may live in the danger zone, but that doesn't mean that the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead can't strengthen us to live uprightly and live unattached from the cares and possessions of this age so that we can actually inherit eternal life in the age to come. Well, I'm gonna jump into the rest of my workout, but if this was encouraging, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure you like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you all in the next one.